Welcome. A very important rotator cuff muscle that's involved in many type of shoulder problems like frozen shoulder, which is adhesive capsulitis, bursitis, bicipital tendonitis, dislocation of the humeral head inside the glenoid fossa. There are many different things that this one muscle can cause. And that is the subscapularis muscle, the largest rotator cuff muscle. It is the strongest rotator cuff muscle. And the function of it is to internally rotate your arm like this, going inwards. It actually stabilizes the head of the humerus inside the glenoid fossa. It's supplied by the fifth and sixth nerve root which forms into the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. On the posterior part of the brachial plexus, it forms into the subscapularis nerve. The subscapularis nerve then innervates that subscapularis muscle. The most important thing I want to show you is that not only shoulder problems from physical exertion can cause problems in that subscapular muscle, but cervical problems, disc herniations, alteration of the curve, a kyphosis of a curve, affecting that nerve root, the C5 or C6 nerve root, because that nerve root innervates that subscapularis nerve, which innervates the subscapularis muscle. Understand that the subscapularis, as you can see right here, it really is the inside of the whole scapula. It's a thick, thick muscle. And that muscle comes underneath that scapula and makes its way underneath the armpit to the lesser tubercle of the, of the humerus. That's where it attaches. But I've seen plenty of people here through the internet who's teaching the wrong way on releasing this muscle. I'm going to teach you the right way. Why? Because I'm anatomically going to show you a little bit simply how you can find it. Because if you just come under that armpit and you start pushing, you got other tendons, you got other muscles, you got the latissimus dorsi, you got the teres, teres major minor under there. You've got areas that are dangerous to start pushing and poking in there and you can become very sore, very tender, and you can hurt yourself. So what I want to do is I want you to follow along with me. The first thing I want you to do is put your elbow, the involved shoulder that you're affecting, okay? Obviously if it's your shoulder pain, whatever you're having, frozen shoulder, adhesive capsulitis, bursitis, whatever you're having, put your elbow against your hip and I want you to just push against, push this way, just to get the feel of it. Take your hand, push up against your hand, okay? That's the movement that we're trying to push. Now, I want you to go ahead and take your thumb and put it underneath the armpit, okay? Underneath the armpit, you can go over your clothes. I'm going under my clothes just to show you. And I want you to take these fingers and grab it around just like this. Now, as your finger is underneath the armpit, I want you to take this arm and I want you to push it against your elbow, the hand. Just push gently. And as you push gently, as you're squeezing in there lightly, but as you push your hand against the elbow, you'll feel that muscle come out at you. Aha! That is the muscle that's contracting right now. So let's go ahead and make a contact on that muscle. And if you kind of lose it, go ahead and push your hand against your elbow again lightly. Grab that muscle. And now what I want you to do I would like you to just work your way, push on that muscle and hold it, and work your way up the, up the arm, underneath the armpit, and just hold it there, okay? You're going to hold it about 30 seconds. Now what I want you to do is just want you to go back and forth, just like this. And as you go back and forth, hold that pressure. Good. Just keep holding it. Okay? And you'll do that about 30 seconds. Just back and forth. You can move your finger up a little more on the muscle if you like. You'll feel it as you go back and forth. Now what I want you to do, I want you to drop the arm. And I just want you just to move it around in light circles, okay? You're going to go clockwise, just like this, in light circles. Good. Okay? 
just like this. And then you're going to go counterclockwise. Good. All right? You hold on to that muscle nice and firmly. About 30 seconds. Okay, as you grab up on the muscle, I want you to go ahead and put your elbow here at 90 degrees. And I just want you to go up and down, just like this. Good. Just hold on to that muscle. Just push in there. And you could move it a little bit, maybe a half inch, an inch, up around the muscle and just hold it there as you move the arm passively, just like this. Okay, actively. We're actually using our muscles right now. Okay, do that 30 seconds. Now what I want you to do, I want you to do supinate and pronate, just like this. As you hold that point, and as you supinate and pronate, you can feel a little movement under there, and you'll start to feel change. So we're kind of like actively releasing it. Active release as we're stabilizing that muscle underneath. Good. Just like that, about 30 seconds. Then you can go ahead and let it down. Now, the purpose of putting that area through different movements is to get a release, a different angle. If you just go in there, and a lot of the people will just tell you to put your arm on your shoulder and to tell you to go there and push and push and push, you're going to get more results by adding movement, kinetic movement into that area than just keeping it statically still the way it is and just poking around. So try those different movements. You can be a little creative. If you lose the muscle, again, you can grab, as I told you initially, like this, all right? And you could just put pressure on your elbow with your other hand. And as you put a little pressure from your hand under your elbow, you'll feel the muscle come out at you. That's how you know you're on it. There's lots of lymph nodes in there. It's, it's very sore. Don't overstimulate it. Don't make yourself too sore. But again, frozen shoulder, adhesive capsulitis, stimulating, stimulating this muscle is a big asset for you because when this muscle is overworked or it's actually involved from the neck, from a disc, a herniation, a bulging disc, or even a kyphotic neck, where the neck is actually reversed like this, or you have degenerative joint disease, or spondylosis, or degenerative disc disease, and you're affecting that nerve, you will still need to address the neck if that's the condition, but you can have neck and shoulder problems. Remember that the innervation from these nerves supply the shoulder down the arm into the hand. That's why many of you may have tingling, numbness, cramping, aching, or even heaviness. I hope this uh, video is an asset for you. I hope it really makes a, a big change and I hope it's very helpful. I ask you to share it with others. Leave your comments below. Subscribe if you haven't so you can continue to receive the best of the self-help videos here on the internet. And most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel. Thank you.